A very good morning, Uganda. Rowena Kajumba here, and uh, we're looking at your new agenda. Uh, with us uh, in our studios, we have a guest with us. Uh, he's uh, Nimpamia Enoch, who is the deputy uh, from uh, Construction Sector Transparency Initiative. Uh, you could call it Cost Uganda, and he has a number of things that uh, he's going to be discussing with us. You're very welcome. Thank you so much. Yes, well, and uh, indeed. Uh, real quick, as if we could just jump into uh, our discussion, what is Cost Uganda? Tell us about Cost Uganda. Uh, Cost Uganda, as you rightly put it, is Construction Sector Transparency Initiative. Mm. Uh, it is. It brings different uh, sectors together. Three of them. One is the government, the private sector, and the civil society. Mm -hmm whose mandate or work is largely anchored uh, in construction-related uh, uh, aspects. Okay. So for the case of our country, you need to know that cost is international. And different countries have, su have subscribed to cost principles. And Uganda was, is among the few African countries on, uh, that applied to join cost international. So actually it was UNRWA which applied on behalf of the government of Uganda for cost, for Uganda to join the cost fraternity. Mm -hmm. So we have the government, private sector, and the civil society. So um, currently, we have the Ministry of Works and the Minister uh, Honore Bontege as the champion herself. Mm -hmm. Then we have representatives from UNRWA, okay. representatives from the Office of the President, Directorate of Ethics and Integrity, Office of the Prime Minister mm -hmm. are all represented in this cost. Okay. Uh, so looking at cost, as uh, uh, Ali asked, uh, what is it that uh, you aspire to do, or what are the core features mm -hmm. of, of cost? Mm -hmm. Cost is largely anchored on different uh, core features. A, uh, we have multi-stakeholder engagement. Okay. So it is a unique initiative that brings the three sectors together. We've not had such a working kind of arrangement. Mm. Then the other second component is uh, assurance. Uh -huh. So we do assurance studies mm -hmm. on different uh, construction projects. We are not limited to a particular project, but the different construction projects, okay. say roads, railways, airports, schools. As, you, as, as we proceed, shall be, of course, be able to go to the other aspects uh, of mm. what we've recently done. done yeah. Then we also have uh, disclosure of information. We, are, we always want to have our information disclosed mm -hmm. to the public. This is for purposes of informing the public uh, on uh, what takes place within the sector. Uh, what are those challenges within the sector? But our core mandate largely is uh, that we simplify this technical information, which is understood by the key persons like the engineers in a simplified way, so that a local person who never did engineering can easily understand this information. Mm -hmm. So briefly, that's what I could say about cost. Interesting. Now, you recently launched um, the, a second assurance uh, report. Yeah. And uh, on different procurement entities, yes. really, mm. uh, Ministry of Works and Education there, and Wakiso. Mm -hmm. Tell us about that. Yeah, um, we, this, we did the first assurance report. Mm. It was limited on different uh, procurement entities. Okay. But this time we expanded the scope. Mm -hmm. Now, so we looked at different pro procurement entities uh, that we subjected on this second assurance uh, uh, study. Mm -hmm. And we need to be mindful of the fact that oftentimes uh, we contract uh, the assurance professionals, and those are the engineers, mm -hmm. so who undertake some of these studies on different procurement entities, on different projects are uh, uh, implemented. For this second assurance uh, uh, report, mm -hmm. we sampled eight projects okay. uh, from um, uh, the Ministry of Works and Transport, mm -hmm. Ministry of Education and Sports, and Wakiso uh, local government. Okay. To be particular, uh, the project subjected through uh, this second assurance report included aspects of design update, okay. 
phased sealing of ndege namazuwa ndege kitiko phase 2 okay. upgrading of municipal council road under much in the sawa gabo yeah. upgrading of St. Noah Mfufu road much in the sawa gabo upgrading of Nansa na Wamara katoke uh, Jinja Karori Hest project okay. uh, Hest project 1 and quite many of them were within Machinde. Mm -hmm. Then, of course, as I said, we went beyond this local government. We looked at other areas like Central Material Laboratory in Chereka. Okay. We looked at construction of Rukaya Market, mm. completion uh, of Phase 1 and 2 works. I think you know Rukaya so well. Oh, yeah. We were also interested in knowing how much was spent here. If they follow the okay. design, mm -hmm. uh, was, was the, is, uh, is the cost largely um, consistent uh, with, the, uh, with what was uh, submitted during the co co contractual process and mm -hmm. all those arrangements? Mm -hmm. So we looked at that. Now, in terms of um, uh, findings mm -hmm. for those particular entities that I've talked about, Mm. But uh, uh, before we go into the findings, what was the objective, really, the objectives of this, if we could uh, look into that? Yeah, why we did this second assurance uh, uh, report or mm. study, mm -hmm. largely was to look at different uh, things, which includes. Yeah. The main purpose was to verify information, mm -hmm. which is currently being disclosed in public, since the project preparation, mm -hmm. planning, procurement, implementation through completion. So the second assurance process was built on the mm -hmm. following objectives. Okay. Number one, we wanted to highlight issues of potential concern mm -hmm. and good practices revealed by the disclosed, mm -hmm. validated, and verified information. This relates to individual projects as well as common concerns among participating procuring entities. That was objective one. Mm -hmm. If there are those good practices, can we document them? Can we have them replicated in other uh, construction projects? Mm -hmm. Because we found that really over time, from the first assurance process to this second assurance process, there is a very significant change. Different procuring entities are subscribing to the cost ideas uh, because we have different disclosure uh, formats uh, which are internationally accepted, even nationally accepted including those provided for under the PPDA. Mm -hmm. We also wanted to assist the multi-stakeholder group to liaise with the procurement entities managing the selected projects to ensure the publication of relevant data as outlined in the infrastructure data standards, or what we call the IDS. Okay. The other component, of course, we wanted to carry out a more detailed review of mm -hmm. the disclosed projects uh, or refer projects of concern to an independent uh, authority. So these were some of the objectives mm -hmm. as to why we had to conduct this second assurance. Okay. Uh, now report. with these objectives, yeah. after you've pointed out really, yeah. uh, what findings did you get uh, at the end of the day after? Um, well, in summary, I mm -hmm. could say that one, we found that there is that different procuring entities mm. are now willing to disclose more information regarding uh, key aspects within mm. the contracting process. This includes areas like project information, project location, project sums of uh, or project amount, mm -hmm. project uh, start date, project completion date, um, aspects to do with cost variances and quite many others. So initially when we started as Coast to Uganda, it was challenging especially by different procurement entities releasing this information. But increasingly, we realized that by 60%, mm -hmm. they are now cooperative because they have realized that the more you disclose this information, mm -hmm. we subject it to, second, uh, to the assurance process or to our processes, you are able uh, 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 to brand yourself or you are able to be known as a good performer. Mm -hmm. Like for different tertiary institutions under the Ministry of Education, we visited different secondary schools, oh, okay. tertiary institutions, universities, 
that uh, are being supported by Ministry uh, of Education. Mm -hmm. And we found really there were a few issues. Yeah. But in terms of transparency, we could realize that there is that something good uh, that, is, yeah. that is coming, which wasn't happening uh, before. Mm. And of course, the Ministry of Works, having Honore Bontege as our champion, mm. has also significantly improved the way it conducts our business. Mm -hmm. uh, in different uh, uh, projects that we subjected under this study. Okay. What do you think has caused the change in shift? To see that they're now uh, uh, cooperative and going towards that direction, what do you think could have pushed them towards that positive uh, change? Yeah, this change in the trajectory mm -hmm. is informed by our earlier engagements and processes. Mm -hmm. Because when cost in uh, Uganda was constituted, that's yes. around 2015. Mm -hmm. There were lots of visitations. Uh, ca can we do more than what we've been doing? Mm -hmm. If we have PPDA, what is this cost bringing mm -hmm. on board? Yeah. So we undertook a series of trainings. We undertook a series of campaigns uh, to different procurement entities mm -hmm. and all key relevant stakeholders, including the fact that we brought the best trained engineers from the UK and elsewhere, like Engineer Hamis, mm -hmm. who were able to teach different procurement entities the, their responsibilities, their mandate, mm -hmm. and how they can easily capture information. Let me tell you amazingly, mm -hmm. at some of these procurement entities, we could find they have information. But the way it is stored, yeah. the way it is um, uh, uh, recorded, mm -hmm. was not really palatable. Say mm -hmm. somebody like you who is a journalist, mm -hmm. you could get there, look at the figures, and you couldn't make sense of what Out those of, figures yeah. are saying. Mindful of the fact that there is a, dif a difference between uh, information and data. Data is the raw figure. Indeed. That's the data. Mm -hmm. But once you have that raw figure translated uh, in form of narratives, mm -hmm. then that constitutes information. So we could find that in terms of storage of information, it was not in a friendly format. So we took some of these uh, different representatives from different procurement entities uh, for training, and yeah. now they are capturing the information as per international data standards, okay. IDS. Mm -hmm. So that is one of the reasons why there is this significant change. Then the other second component is, mm -hmm. well, once COST was constituted in Uganda, from the word go, the Ministry of Works yes. was embraced COST. As I rightly put it, it was the union which applied on the behalf of the government of Uganda. So the fact that we have uh, the minister herself as the champion, yeah. even uh, the minister of state for works, General Katumba Wamara, all of these have been really uh, facilitating and have been embracing different cost activities. So at the end of the day, it has in a way um, influenced Mm. These other procuring entities. To, that if mm. our mother ministry is committed to this, then who are we not to, not to, uh, uh, to join to COSTO to follow the COSTO uh, principles? Mm. So that also informs it. Then the other thing is also the office of the president. Mm -hmm. The office of the president, there is a department within the office of the president, uh, presidential construction unit, mm -hmm. um, that is really keen to ensure that there is transparency and value for money in all construction projects. The president ha himself is personally committed to ensuring that construction lives up to the standards of what we are supposed to be seeing. And uh, as a result of those kind of buy-ins or willingness, mm -hmm. that's why we are seeing significant that, uh, change. change yeah. Then for the local government like Wakiso, mm -hmm. we did the first assurance report. Then after that, we were able to correct them, train them on how certain information can be captured, mm -hmm. how you can disseminate this information to the public. So mm -hmm. having seen from Wakiso, because we started with a few projects like Makinde, Savagabo Road, mm -hmm. so the rest were, were, were uh, 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 compared Cheers. really to follow. Yeah. And recently, we were invited by uh, this uh, Iganga local government mm. uh, to train, to carry out uh, uh, trainings on how they can capture this information, translate mm. this information. So that's why we are able to achieve all these milestones. Okay. So you have hinted on a couple of, do you have any other entities really that you said let us also focus on in this particular case? 
Yeah, actually, we have different entries. Like mm -hmm. as I was referring, mm -hmm. PPDA, mm -hmm. uh, we've been working closely with PPDA. Mm -hmm. uh, UNRA, I made a mention of that. Mm -hmm. Ministry of Education. Yes. Now we are heading to Ministry of Works to look at different projects uh, under Ministry, no, Ministry of Health. Mm -hmm. Like different laboratories constructed. Uh -huh. We shall be looking at different uh, health units. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, because usually our interest is, is there value for money? Mm -hmm. Right? Is there transparency and accountability? Cost is meant to deepen. Yes. The transparency and accountability in construction sector uh, projects. Why you could ask yourself a question, why particularly construction uh, projects? Mm. Because large sums of money, about 60% internationally, mm -hmm. is always allocated to construction projects. And, all, and of course, in Uganda, mm. construction uh, projects take also huge sums of oh, money. Yes, yes. Minus defense, mm -hmm. uh, you'll find it ranks among the first four uh, 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 um, sectors mm. that are allocated a lot of uh, funds. funds yeah. And therefore, uh, having that in mind, and also bearing in, fact, uh, in mind that better roads, better construction projects, mm -hmm. better lives. There mm -hmm. is that nexus between the quality uh, of public works construction projects yes. to improving the livelihoods of the people. Mm -hmm. That is our interest. Because if you have this good road, this is a public road, whose consumption is uh, non-excludable to others. Mm -hmm. You will not know the uh, multiplier effects as a result of this particular road. But of course, we know that ultimately, it mm -hmm. improves the quality of life. That's why our focus yeah. has been uh, uh, in the construction uh, of uh, public works. Mm -hmm. Then the other thing, um, is uh, over time uh, different, like even you, the journalists, mm. your interest in construction projects was limited because you could <laughs> say this is for engineers, isn't it? Yes. Could say this is for engineers. <laughs> but yeah. we are saying time has come mm. because we even have social engineers now. True. We have environmental engineers. Mm -hmm. We have uh, different types of engineers. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, because like, that's why you usually see like on different construction projects, they say, we need a social worker. worker. We need this. So time has reached that it is not exactly the engineers alone, but we can simplify but this information yeah. for you, like the journalist, mm -hmm. to be able to go and tell the public, mm -hmm. this is being done by your government, this is being done by uh, entity B and C. Mm -hmm. That is the, uh, the, the aspect that I would want to emphasize. Okay. I know you have some statistics for us in terms of performance over the years since you really got yourselves involved. Mm -hmm. But real quick, Let's look at the challenges you have got as Coast Uganda in regards to, to this really. Yes, you've said uh, the compliance is you know, a thing now, mm -hmm. but what are some of those challenges that you feel maybe if worked upon, you could even do better? Um, before the challenges, what I didn't inform you is that this uh, report, mm -hmm. we, uh, we are talking about the second assurance uh, report, yes. was launched by the minister. Mm -hmm. November 2018. It's a recent report. Yes. It's a good report. I will, of course, leave the a copy for you. Mm. So uh, the challenges that we find is that some different procurement entities are still in the analog mm. stage of having big files, uh, big documents scattered there and here. Um, uh, this information, of course, is not user-friendly. We find mm -hmm. that challenge, storage of materials, records, it is a challenge. Then the other second component is that uh, there are those procuring entities mm -hmm. who, ha who, who are a little bit uh, less cooperative. Yes. But now that we have the Ministry of Works, they are cooperating. That mm -hmm. was in the past. Yes. But for now, they are cooperating uh, seriously. Mm -hmm. Then the other challenge perhaps is that we usually find uh, the cost variances. Mm -hmm. Cost variances, of course, when you are doing the procurement, then after procurement, uh, you get a contract. Uh, we, we, we usually want to, you to be living in the margins of the very figures that you quoted. But we sometimes find higher vi variance yes. on different uh, projects. Uh -huh. But uh, this is informed by other uh, aspects. Mm -hmm. Like, of course, um, it, it would mean that you did not use money appropriately 
as it was meant. I'm being diplomatic here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I wouldn't want to call it corruption or embezzlement, but sometimes yes. we find it mm -hmm. happening. It happened, yeah. Then also, we always find out uh, 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 that there are some um, uh, shoulder works being done by different procurement entities. Mm -hmm. But this is now uh, significantly reducing compared to when we started because the shoddy works now in different procurement entities that we visited yeah. have reduced by now 30%. Oh, so we good. hope that if this trajectory is maintained, we mm -hmm. shall be able to uh, uh, live, see best roads like the way you see Bishop Adama Road. Mm -hmm. This is a road that connects um, Addis Ababa and Bishoftu in Ethiopia. Yeah. It's one of the best roads in Africa. Designed and constructed appropriately within the timelines, within realistic costs, mm -hmm. and uh, it is of the best quality. So we even went to Ethiopia and different countries. Even my team recently, I went to Malawi mm -hmm. on different benchmarking okay. uh, missions. So we hope that we shall be able to reach out to, to, to that stage the, and be able to... Uh, <laughs> out of it. Uh, yeah, so as, as we wind up finally, really, maybe if we, if there's a couple of things you really want to share uh, with the public, uh, mm. the people that are watching us here mm. this particular morning. Yeah, particular things I need to um, uh, share with the public. Mm -hmm. One, it is your responsibility. You don't need to have a member of parliament to go and ask certain information on a construction project that is within your jurisdiction or your area. Mm -hmm. Say, if I'm a common person staying in Nigeria, and there is a project starting along my area, you have a right as a citizen to go to the district or to the ministry, mm -hmm. ask for particular information. E.g., you have a right to ask for the project design. How was this project designed? What were the total costs of this project? Because we are encouraging different procurement entities to be bringing this information, yes. pin them on different signposts. Uh, the project project end, mm -hmm. that information you, you, is vital. You can ask for it. Mm -hmm. You even have a right to ask for uh, the information regarding the project engineer mm -hmm. and who is the contractor. That right, you have it. It is embedded. Um, uh, within the laws of Uganda, mm -hmm. uh, because we even have a, a particular uh, access to information act. Of course, it prohibits you on accessing certain information that mm -hmm. is strictly confidential, but largely uh, there is that information that can to go to the public domain. Mm -hmm. So as a citizen, you have that right to demand uh, for such kind of information. Okay. Because at, uh, at the end of the day, if a project is put in your uh, uh, particular uh, in a particular area. Mm -hmm. It is meant to help you, not to help somebody else. Somebody, yes. So it is incumbent upon you that you need to get some of these uh, key aspects uh, highlighted and explained to you. Mm -hmm. And uh, with the different processes that we've gone through, different trainings for different programming entities and their leaders, mm -hmm. uh, they are able really to uh, change some of these things. Uh, for mm -hmm. instance, when we were starting, do you see this roundabout fairway? Yes. The way it was designed initially, we, we, we went with the Ministry of Works and asked the contractor, mm. if, this, uh, if this, do you think everybody in Kampala understands the fairway roundabout? Then they realized that there were a few issues. Yes. Even the signpost was running short of key information. Mm -hmm. So we said no. In the interest of the public, Put this key information. Mm -hmm. When will the project end? Who is the contractor? Who is the engineer? Now we are even moving an extra mile. Please put the amount. Because this is not <laughs> the money. This is the taxpayer's money. money. Yeah. Or oh, if it is not taxpayer, it is taxpayer's money even if it is a grant. Mm -hmm. Or if it is a loan. Mm -hmm. It will ultimately be paid or be borne by your own self. Indeed. Therefore, you have a right to know uh, the amount on that sign post. Indeed. Yeah. So the other component is mm. um, you need to access some, uh, you need to get contact with Coast to Uganda, or mm. is with Coast to Uganda, mm -hmm. if there is a particular uh, issue on a given project in your area. Okay. We can be helpful, we can follow up with the ministry, we can follow up with the engineer, mm -hmm. we can follow up with the uh, contractor, 
on whatever particular uh, aspects or challenges you may be facing. Mm -hmm. This ranges from uh, like dust, if a, if a road is being constructed, sometimes some are stubborn. You, ideally, you are supposed to power water so that this, the dust doesn't end up in the residence places. Yeah, so if there is an issue of that kind, you inform us and we follow it up. Our role here is not, we are not a prosecution agency. Mm -hmm. We are not prosecuting anybody. Our role here is to empower mm -hmm. different procurement entities to live up to their standards and to live up to the expectations of the citizens of Uganda. Of Uganda. For us, okay. we advise, for mm -hmm. us, we technically mm -hmm. conduct even studies to inform different decision-making uh, processes. Okay. Mm. Well, thank you so much, uh, Nin Pamia. Enoch, deputy in the Construction Sector Transparency Initiative, you can call it Cost Uganda, and he has been very, very clear on what their mandate is and what you, as a Ugandan, should be knowing the kind of information that you have to actually access mm. your right to access. Anyway, but that's uh, what we had for you for now. Uh, but we're coming back with another session there on GMU agenda. Otherwise, do not go away. You're still watching Good Morning Uganda. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. <laughs> Indeed. Thank you for seeing me. Mm. your week with the best mid-morning entertainment. We bring you the latest in showbiz. He actually has already asked me for hand in her, for my hand in marriage way before I was even pregnant. Topical issues. So, as I told you, I want to become a business tycoon. Maybe I'll start with my a restaurant. Yeah. Fashion, tech and gadget news and your countdown. Join us Monday to Thursday, 10 a.m. Jam 101. We set the pen. Talking about the best, I said my name is involved here. Yeah. Cinech Uganda is responsible for distributing the Dicto signal to Ugandans. We are currently activating all of country sites to boost our coverage. Jinja, Mbara, Masaka, Hoima, Soroti and Bale are now on. Our viewers in those areas are advised to use your free-to-air decoders to pick the signal. Senate Uganda, your sole signal distributor countrywide.
to welcome you back to our second segment of Good Morning Uganda Agenda. Now, we've been uh, geared up as a country and perhaps internationally for the World's Disabled Disability Day. Now, this is a day where we commemorate people with disabilities, people who have had uh, challenges in doing particular things, either physically, mentally, it could also be emotionally. Now, disability has been given quite a number of definitions world over, but we shall look for the most uh, closest to our viewers and perhaps to any layman in Uganda and uh, this is simply where someone is not able to do particular things normally. This could be mentally as I said or physically. Now uh, with me in studio I'm joined by uh, a comrade, maybe one would say a uh, usual suspect. You're welcome RBC. Thank you very much. Yes. Good morning to you. Good morning. And good morning to you viewers. Okay. Mm. Uh, now we're speaking disability. Uh, our viewers out there would want to know what is disability in, in a way as, as a person who has, who has been around, how would you define disability? Because <laughs> so, so, uh, so, so someone who, is, who has uh, who, who, who had uh, his tooth, uh, remove his tooth also says that they are disabled. I've had one one of parliament who I think at the time I was talking to them and he told me he's a representative of people with disabilities yet he had an eye optical problem. So what is disability? Well, it, is, it could be uh, bigger than what we know usually. But I want to first of all uh, inform viewers that I'm not an expert yes. on issues of disability. And uh, I am not a spokesperson of the people with the disabilities. disabilities. Mm. But I speak about this matter as a human being as a Ugandan, and above all, as a leader. Because sure. as a leader, you take care of uh, a number of uh, issues and a number of persons, persons of different categories. So uh, as we know in, in, in general terms, and as ordinary people, people with disabilities are usually uh, viewed in terms of uh, body disability in most cases where we find that uh, maybe one is, uh, has got one arm, uh, maybe an arm which was amputated, or uh, an arm that uh, was lame from childhood, or a leg, and so on and so forth. It could be mental, as you were saying, people who know uh, who are, uh, whose mental abilities are a little bit lower than uh, usual, and in most cases, they might not be in a position to even follow many of the things going on. And uh, that's where you find uh, in the school, for, for instance, those who can also, who cannot hear, who mm. have hearing impairment. The, you have heard about the school of the deaf. Yes. And uh, there are those who cannot see. Eh? Uh, those, those who have problems with the, with the, with the seeing or has got one eye, as you were talking about, one tooth, mm. but uh, one, a person with one eye uh, unable to see or that cannot see or was removed could also pass for a person disability. with a disability and so on and so forth. But uh, uh, you have got extreme cases and uh, cases that are mild. Yes. So that's how we can distinguish. And in most cases, when people are talking about people with the disabilities, they go for the extreme cases. Mm -hmm. People moving in wheelchairs, people uh, who find it hard even to hold the pen like this because they are, uh, their fingers are missing, uh, maybe by a, an accident or naturally they, they, they were born like that. Okay. So those are the people right. that are referred to as people with, with disabilities. disabilities. Now, yes. uh, having been a person who has been in leadership and service, uh, what is your experience towards the government policy when it comes to people with disability? Do you think the government has done enough purposes of including the people with disabilities? First of all, we need to recall that uh, the issue of disability and the uh, government trying to improve their lot may not be new. Uh, even in the 60s, there were programs geared towards uh, 
helping people with dis disabilities. Even individuals, maybe parents or institutions or churches or mosques, could do something, one or two things for a person with this disability. But it was not until uh, the government of the NRM that more consciousness was being uh, built and promoted. And a, a, a broader and clearer policy and program geared towards uh, uh, empowering the people with disability, including uh, improving their, their participation and, it, um, and, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and and inclusion in government activities and the other uh, uh, life issues was promoted. So. When you look at, first of all, before you look at uh, even the law, the NRM manifesto and the policy orientation has been for the people with disability to help them uh, come up and also to prevent, because there is also prevention, uh, prevention of others, those who would even escape, to escape, to enable those who, ca who could who have a chance of escaping, to escape being people with disability. That's why there is a popularization of immunization against killer diseases like e polio. When I was growing up, uh, I didn't know much. Of course, I was a child, but again, even as I, I continued to grow, I, I did not much came to, to, to my mind that this was a, a, a problem that could be reduced, that could be fought. So the immunization program, against killer diseases like uh, polio are geared towards reducing as much as possible people with disability because of the policy of prevention is better than the cure. That is even in the manifesto mm. of, of, NRM. of NRM. Now, when you come to the law, the Constitution of the Republic of Uganda, 1995, and even other laws, uh, uh, outlaw discrimination based on the uh, one who's ability uh, body or, or, or hearing and so on abilities so you are not going to discriminate against somebody because can, he can he or she does not hear properly or does not hear at all and in that connection the government has been struggling with empowerment empowerment through education, that these who are PWs should also access education as much as the other, other people yes. were able to. When I was uh, at university, first year yeah, as a university student, I, wa I was concerned when I was hearing noise coming from typewriters in the classroom, in the lecture room, until I found out that these, we had the one or two people who are people with disability, those who could not see. So they were using machines uh, which look like, uh, they work like typewriters. Mm. Uh, I have forgotten their name. And they are one of them actually, who work actually in the Mitchell Hall called Kamiya. Kamiya, a person with disability, and uh, he, 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 he concluded, he, he finished his, his degree in mass communication, like other people. So mm. even in the lower classes, the, the, uh, the government, has been encouraging uh, people with disability to be included, to be included. in our systems. Yes. yes, and even now you look at political participation. Okay. A person is not discriminated against because it's a PWD. Okay. No, but they have been encouraged. There are even special seats for reserved them. for people with disability. Where I was in Manafa, were the woman and the man in the district council, and so is the case with lower councils and even in the parliament we have got slots people for people with the people with disability okay now i shall pick it up from there rdc now we take a short break and we come back to conclude on this topic of disability as we gear up for the uh, preparation and celebrations of the world disability day
Experience convenience with Airtel Money today when you pay all your taxes. It's simple, it's instant, and it's secure. To pay your URA taxes, simply dial star 185 hush. Select pay bill. Select URA. Select pay registered. Enter PRN or PTN number. Confirm payment. Enter your PIN to complete the transaction. Use Airtel Money today to pay your URA taxes conveniently. Airtel, the smartphone network. Following the amendment of the Excise Duty Act by the government of Uganda, the public is hereby informed that the mobile money tax has been amended. The tax of 0.5% will apply on cash withdrawals only. For example, tax on withdrawals of 100,000 shillings is 500 shillings. There will be no tax charged on the following transactions. Sending money, receiving money, depositing money, and making payments. For more information or queries, please contact our customer care toll-free line 100 or visit our websites at airtel.co.ug, mtn.co.ug, and africel. UG. Well, welcome you back uh, to GMU Agenda. Good morning, Uganda. Now, I'm uh, still having this discussion about disability. Now, right from where we left it, a lot of laws in Uganda, RDC, as you may know, like uh, the Persons with Disabilities Act, particularly mm -hmm. talks about right to access of both premises, public places, but this is not something we have seen at all, mm -hmm. you know. And yet uh, institutions that give licenses for construction of these buildings are Ugandan entities and perhaps also government for that matter, mm -hmm. because we don't have a private institution that gives or credits plans, for example, construction all over. Kampala, there is no building. If there is, maybe there are only say ten percent of the nine of hundred percent of the buildings in Kampala do not comply to these requirements. Uh, is there anything that you think is not being done by government or these institutions, particularly to see that these rights are appreciated for people with disabilities? No, in the first place. Uh, uh, yes, I agree with you. There could be few buildings that are easily accessible by people with dis disabilities. Mm. But that is also an achievement that we should be proud of. And when we celebrate a day like today, we are celebrating this day, it is meant to take stock what has been done, what it means to be done. So if we have a few buildings, yes, we take note of, and then we take note of those that ought to have, and then chart a way forward. This day yeah, is a challenge to the leaders like me and others, and those who take key decisions to rise up to the occasion and ensure that the pe people with the disabilities have equal access to these buildings. Some of these buildings may not have that access because uh, technically, maybe, because there's many of them are, are, are older than when the this laws. law came mm -hmm. or when the, 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 uh, the, the policy was developed. Now, but those that can are reminded to ensure that it is enforced. Our, 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 the problem is enforcement. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, I'm glad that uh, media houses like UBC, TV, they immediately they, are, they, took, they took lead. You have that person of sign language. Yes. Took lead, and other TV stations are adapting, are following suit. Yeah. And that is an achievement you it cannot is. just uh, undermine. So slowly, we shall be there. But that weakness must be uh, addressed. Must be. Uh, now, uh, we're looking at uh, people with disability and representation. Uh, there's what we call local councils. We also have at the national level. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe lastly, uh, Ndugwara DC has also we wind up. Do we see fair representation of people with disabilities at the local level, where I understand you must have much knowledge about the people and us, and, and then at the national level? There could be enough 
Why? Uh, the the, the uh, people with disabilities are not everywhere. There are cases where a local council one might fail to uh, attract a single person, even if the, the position is there. Some of the positions remain unf unfulfilled, un 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 unfilled because the people are not there. And then even the, the case uh, g goes for these other the levels of, 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 of government mm. or representation. Now, the other, the, the other uh, point that one has to consider is that not everybody, even when they, they are there, not everybody is interested in political leadership. Mm. So you'll find that a, a local council uh, city has a slot for PWD, but uh, those interest. Uh, 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 who are PWDs may not have interest, you know. Uh, and, uh, and so that you cannot blame anybody now. But, 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 but when you speak about representation, sometimes you're also looking at uh, services that are meant to go to mm. people's disabilities. That's right. Regardless of their, because for example, Anna, as an RDC, your representation is not limited. Mm. It is to all of the people, mm. disabled or not, mm. and all those things. Do we have any programs that are involving, you know, what is the point? How do we help these people? No, I, have t I told you about education. That's why you even have uh, a full institution, UNICE, mm. in Chambogo. Yes. Then uh, we have been discussing access that is being promoted. Then you have got wheelchairs. The government has participated in providing wheelchairs to some people yeah. and also encouraged non-government organizations uh, to step in. I know for a fact in a district, district two districts, there is a bishop called Girard. He, 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 he runs a church and a, 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 any give approach. So he's, in, he's interested and he does purchase and donate wheelchairs and okay. other items used by people with the disabilities. I seen in that in Tororo yeah. and Manafa. Then you have, uh, I think you have seen the number of people with the white cane, is what they call it, white cane. That one used by the blind. Uh, they, they are also many min, more than it was before. Yeah. Yes, it is like a, a services to the PWDs is, like, is affected like other services in Uganda. We cannot say that uh, Uganda is at 100% service enjoyment. No. Why? Because of limited funds and other challenges yeah. in leadership. But a day like this one, should be used to make positive reflection and positive reflection that enable us the leaders and the led to de decide to move forward okay uh, well of course uh, speaking about disability we speak about it with uh, how close it is to us some of us who, are, who come from families where we have known this it is not uh, something where we are not proud of not that we are either proud of it, but we say, and we shall say from us here at UBC, that uh, as a common notion goes, disability is not inability. No. But we believe and trust that you can be and do so much more to the development of your country, your family, as long as you don't become a captive and prisoner of that disability. Now, that is it that we had for you in this segment of Good Morning Uganda Agenda. Now, we will take a break, and when we come back, we'll give you a quote of the day, and later on, Ruben will take you in sports. Good morning.